Hey guys, GameWay3800 here once again, back with the M17XR1 by Eleanor, not Dell. And I got the DVD drive open by using a pin, and you can see, probably, hopefully, that it is indeed a Blu-ray drive. It's got two laser things there. Let's hope the camera doesn't fall on Kim and Suicide here. There. Using a big old Dell adapter back there. And we're going to go ahead and uh, hopefully that all the drivers, or hope and see that all the drivers will work with Windows 7 and 64 bit. There we go. Now, get the adapter. What is the adapter even doing over there? Okay. Plug her in. I'm going to face it this way so that we can all see. Power on. Set power on. Hit this thing. Why do you know power on? Or maybe it wasn't in there all the way. Might make sense. There we go. I hate that power button. It doesn't have a clicky tactile thing. So that's that. Just gonna go and do the screen here. And there we go. This will be so much fun to watch, I'm sure. So I'll get back to you once it's all installed and we're hopefully at the driver's scene. So yeah. Alright, here we are. It's at the screen. Should do uh, good with detecting all the drives since it's a Service Pack 1 DVD. And this laptop came with Windows Vista. So, yeah. Should see everything just fine, hopefully. Also, now I have the top fan on to replace the noise made by the washing machine that is now done. I'm so efficient at being annoying. I always like to hear there's like a little a lip thing here to lift up the screen. Uh, I think Alienware was one of the first ones to do that, unless uh, Apple did it, did it first. But if Alienware was the first to do it here, then Razer and Apple and the like are all copying and they should sue. Or, I don't know. It's taking its time getting to uh, install Windows screen. Don't know why. I really don't know why here. Hopefully it's okay. If I need to install from a USB stick, I will do that. But then there's the chance that uh, it will not work uh, correctly. Because it'll, it'll work, but then it won't detect the drives. That's the issue with installing up a USB key sometimes. Uh, I'll go get the USB key ready. And if it's not installed or up into the install window screen by then, then I'll know what's going on. So yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, I have never had this happen before. While I was getting the flash drive ready, I come back to a blue screen on install. Like, how? Why? What is this? Vista? Oh well, I'm going to go off to USB now and see if that works at all. It's the same ISO that I ripped from the, D the DVD, so... Eh? I, I don't... I've never had this happen before. How this? Why? I've only heard of this happening one other time when my teacher was installing Windows XP onto an old Toshiba. <laughs> Whatever. Alright, we booted up the USB. And this time, no blue screen. Hooray, that's a step in kind of the right direction. Install now. This should go smoothly. It's on the USB. Maybe the DVD drive's not working right, and that's what happened. Because it was taking a long time to load, and it did show the DVD icon quite a few times. So maybe that DVD drive is not quite up to par. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Now it's all one 150 gig hard drive or 149 gig. That's actually a 160 gig. So yeah, that's gonna do its thing. And yeah, I'm glad it's not killed itself yet. Although the CPU fan was being very loud, I hear that's common for these things. Uh, maybe I'll go underneath and replace all the thermal compound and stuff, but for now, I'm just going to get Windows installed and we'll see if it'll recognize the drivers. That was the biggest hassle I ever had in my life with drivers. Uh, I had one of these before and it had dual 9800Ms and a Core 2 Extreme X9000. It was an amazing machine, but I could not get the display drivers to install. I tried every driver I could find, just nothing would happen. It would always say, like, no devices found on your computer. And I realize now that I should have forced install by doing the INI file, but I didn't know that at the time. If it does it here, though, I'll show you exactly what happened. Although with what seems like an 8600 or 8700 a GT graphics card that should automatically be in Windows database so it should install automatically upon uh, logging on. Hopefully, anyways, that's the plan. And I'm not sure if uh, the Wi-Fi driver uh, will work automatically, but I do have uh, a Netgear adapter thing that I could easily use and solve that issue. But for now, it's installing. There's no blue screen yet. <laughs> Still have no idea how that happened before, but I'll get to you once we're logged onto the desktop. So yeah. Alright, it's almost done. I want to reboot, so I'm going to have to uh, set the BIOS to boot up the hard drive, not up the USB key. Since that's what I had to do to get it to boot to the USB key to begin with. So yeah. Installing updates should not take too long. Hopefully not, anyways. Got myself some tea. Restarting. And there we go. Smash the F2 key to get to the BIOS. Hmm, hopefully speakers are okay there. Hopefully that should be it. If not, uh, just restart. I don't even know what key I was hitting actually. It's not illuminated so I can't see. Small bug on the wall. It's being quite loud, but I expect this from an old Core 2 system trying to load a modern OS. I think it is booting off of the your speak key there. Oh well. Just gotta actually see where the F2 key is. Oh well, I'll make sure at the desktop. Alright, it's going up to the desktop now. Let's see how it does. Let's see if it'll auto detect everything and be amazing or not. Nah. And by everything, I of course mean the graphics card driver, since that's all I care about. Looks like right away no, but yeah. Should have a 1200p display. At 1440 by 900. Right, good enough, I guess. Sound works okay, that's good. Uh, no battery, obviously. And uh, no networks connected, that's also fine. I do have a Netgear adapter. But yeah, it's at the desktop. 
Next episode will be drivers. This could be a painfully long one, so I'm going to end the video here and do the stuff. If you enjoyed the M17X being brought back to life, then please go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course subscribe for more. Thanks, Game Boy. I will see you in the future. Well, I got it. The M17X is up and running. Now, all the drivers have installed as they should. Well, all the necessary ones, the uh, optional ones like the TV tuner, and somehow the uh, FX light editor is not working. I probably just had the wrong version of that, but there's like a TV tuner there. And the video card was a gamble. And uh, it is not an 8700, it is not an 8600. It's not even in the 8000 series, it's the 9800. Uh, GT. That's the best card you can get, uh, get for this uh, when you bought it. You can, of course, throw in dual 280s and it'll work just fine if you hack around with uh, their VBIOS enough. But yeah, this has dual 9800s. And it had a very similar part number to the parts machine I ordered. So I'm wondering if that has dual 9800s. And if that's the case, it'll usually have uh, Extreme Edition as well. Hopefully. Maybe. Possibly. But if that's the case, I'll toss those parts on this and let it be Beast Mode. I guess I could show you what happens when I try to launch the Command Center here. Or the one I have installed. I have no idea which version it is. There we are. Pops up, it loads there. And then it says, access has been granted to the command center. Select your destination. I would like to go to FX editor that would be right here, but it's not there. Also, maybe stealth mode would be there too, but obviously it's not. Now there's fusion and touch. Let's try to go to fusion. Now the app has frozen and there's nothing you can do. So you gotta pull up the task manager and force it closed. So yeah, what I ended up settling on is Windows 7 32-bit. Uh, 64-bit, just no drivers were installing. Windows Vista wouldn't even install. And then Windows uh, 37, 32-bit uh, worked just fine, and all the drivers installed just as they should, except for uh, the ones I showed you. But they're not unnecessary. I can use the keyboard just fine. So, lights would make it easier to see in the dark, but, you know, that's not necessary. So, yeah. A review will get underway as soon as I find out what's in the parts machine. Figure out if I'm going to use those parts or not. And then the review will begin, meaning I'll just use it as my main laptop for a few weeks. I play games, see how well it handles basic things, and give you my final thoughts at the end of it. And then Project Orion will begin. Because I have all the parts I need here. We have the power uh, thing, power cable. We have the video card cover. We have the hard drive and memory cover. And then we have a full screw set for an M15X. So yep, that's all we need, hopefully to get our Project Orion up and done. If that's the case, it'll be a very easy fix, very easy flip. Because Project Orion, and in case you didn't know, most of my projects, except for um, Bolide and Envy, and I guess now Project Supremacy, I have all been sold. Like Project Junior, Project uh, Stardust Breaker is up for sale, Project uh, Ember is sold. You know, I 
I don't keep them all. I, I resell them because profit. Anyways, enough about me. More about this in the review coming up soon. So if you're up to that, then please go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course subscribe for more. Thanks, Game Boy Out, and we'll see you in the future. Before the review, Wonders Updates. Oh boy.